vediamo Eccoci qua, benvenuti, Mike, how are you? Good afternoon. Good afternoon, hi everyone. Contento, how are you, mate? You good? Sì, sì, sono molto contento, raga. Oggi parliamo italiano e dopo parliamo inglese, dopo che l'ospite va via. Ma visto che abbiamo poco tempo, lo sfruttiamo tutto. Salutiamo ovviamente i vari contatti che si stanno aggiungendo. Parleremo in italiano e poi tradurremo in... Uh, Uh, in English, so we're going to speak in Italian and then uh, let's listen Mike when he's going to translate everything, but yeah. era orario d'aperitivo tra una partita e l'altra abbiamo il piacere, l'onore di avere una zebra qui con noi il più giovane del gruppo ovviamente parliamo, lo sapete tutti di Lorenzo Pani Lorenzo, benvenuto a Fratelli di Rugby, come stai? Ciao, buonasera a tutti, molto bene grazie a voi noi bene, ma siamo, con, siamo ancora meglio grazie a te e a tutta la squadra questa settimana, quindi complimenti per la vittoria su, su, sul Uruguay. Eh, guarda, io veramente voglio spremere il più possibile in questi minuti che abbiamo e quindi parto dalla domanda di, di Andy, Mike. Sì, Asking sì, vai, 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 vai. Come ti senti? What it felt and meant to him scoring his first World Cup try? Come, come è stato ovviamente? La sensazione in quel momento e poi l'attesa per esatto. aspettare la conferma del TMO, come ti sei sentito? No, appunto la relazione, dovevo, in teoria dovevo passarla a Paolo, poi mi sono sentito io da attaccare, insomma ho attaccato, ho visto avanzavo, quindi insomma sono riuscito ad arrivare fino all'area di meta, io onestamente mi sentivo di averla schiacciata, però dal, quando ho rivisto il video ho detto, eh, non, è non meta, proprio... ha fischiato, allora, è, è, è meta. meta. No, no, infatti, Beh, infatti, infatti sono, l'importante è quello. Però no, ero veramente felicissimo, proprio un'emozione incredibile, segnare al mondiale, pensare che insomma all'inizio non ero nemmeno stato combattuto, ritrovarmi qui, giocare titolare, segnare è incredibile, poi insomma quando uno inizia a giocare da piccolino sogna di giocare al mondiale, penso alla popolazione, quindi è proprio bellissimo. Perfetto. Uh, simpatica questa cosa hai detto dovevo passarla quindi c'era una giocata diversa però hai visto lo spazio tra Arata e, e Ceverri esatto. e sì, sì, ho visto lì in quel mezzo secondo il buco sono entrato e... Okay. E bene benissimo come sta andando questa settimana di avvicinamento a, al prossimo step sappiamo che siete divisi diciamo, in tre step tutto il lavoro che è stato fatto con, la, con il gruppo com'è l'avvicinamento a, eh no, alle due sicura, partite no, piuttosto, no. piuttosto esatto esatto no sicuramente ora abbiamo la fortuna di poterci giocare tutto e niente appunto con gli All Blacks sappiamo che vabbè è una squadra incredibile e ora stiamo lavorando appunto più o meno a, con il loro stile di gioco appunto con la squadra che giocherà e sappiamo che appunto loro utilizzano molto l'uso appunto il piede e quindi oggi appunto in allenamento abbiamo provato a a simulare quello poi insomma è una squadra che fa le cose semplici fatte alla perfezione sono imprevedibili insomma do- dovremmo fare una grande partita quello senza ombra di dubbio immagino sia stato anche un focus un po' sulla questione che un po' i tifosi anche hanno sentito la questione dei, dei turnover la pulizia punti d'incontro quindi essere più cinici oppure più precisi sul punto d'incontro magari è stato quello perché sì, sì, esatto, la scorsa partita ci hanno messo in difficoltà e quindi uno dei focus è questo e un altro è appunto quello di entrare dal primo minuto e giocare bene dal primo minuto fino all'ottantesimo perché con squadre magari come l'Uruguay dove siamo noi, quelli più forti diciamo sulla carta, tra virgolette, magari riusciamo a rimontare come abbiamo fatto, però con le All Blacks e con la Francia sappiamo che dobbiamo giocare bene dal primo all'ottantesimo. Quindi disciplina, precisione e qualità. Potremmo eh sì, dire sì, cose semplici, eh? cose semplici, sì. perfetto. Mike, parola a te, visto che io se no parlerei ore. No, 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 va, va. per me volevo chiederti com'è stato quest, diciamo, questo primo ragione in, in, in nazionale, come, come ti hai sentito, eh, co, 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 come è stato l'emozione? Eh, e dove eri quando ti hanno convocato? Quando mi è arrivata la chiamata ero in aeroporto e stavo tornando da raduno del, del Seven, perché ho fatto il Seven quest'estate, non so se 
quindi ero lì, ero felicissimo, felicissimo e, e niente. No, mi ricordo il primo giorno di raduno un po', ero, cioè, ero veramente tanto emozionato e mi tremavano un po' le mani a cena, alla prima cena. Insomma, più che altro vedi mai i giocatori tipo ora, Tommy Allen, che quando ero piccino lo vedevo alla TV, lo ritrovo lì accanto e fa un po' impressione. Poi ovviamente quando sei in campo però devi farti rispettare mm-hmm. e appunto dar tutto perché insomma per entrare nel gruppo non è semplice e e quindi sicuramente quello, no, col, col gruppo mi sono trovato comunque bene fin da subito perché alla fine ho avuto anche la fortuna di giocare sia a Treviso e ora alle Zebre quindi già la maggior parte del gruppo la conoscevo, quindi sicuramente da quel punto di vista sono stato molto avvantaggiato Pronto, tu sei uno dei più giovani ma poi parlando per esempio delle Zebre in generale è un gruppo veramente giovane ha sì. avuto sì. Un, un Roselli in, in entrambe le casi com'è la differenza ad esempio con Kiran con Marius, con Andrea il lavoro nello specifico tu li vedi proprio come delle figure interessanti, ti stanno dando nel giorno per giorno qualcosa stai migliorando il tuo gioco sembra che giochi proprio con tranquillità è molto pulito quello che hai fatto vedere per esempio nel, nell'esordio anche in precedenza, ma l'esordio è stato veramente mai fuori, diciamo, mai un piede fuori giocando all'ala, sempre quel rischio sempre puntare all'interno come sta andando lo sviluppo? Come ti senti? No. Ecco, l'esordio, allora, qui al Mondiale ovviamente beh, l'ho fatto da ala e niente, è un ruolo che era da tanto non lo facevo e pian piano mi, insomma, mi sto iniziando a ritrovare. Però l'esordio, esordio l'ho fatto appunto entro la scorsa era estremo e lì sinceramente mi, cioè, mi, ovviamente mi piace più l'estremo. Questo è chiaro perché per il piede, per le prese al volo, poi magari col contrattacco e più libertà è una cosa che mi piace un sacco, però no, con loro mi trovo bene appunto perché mi danno la possibilità di fare entrambi i ruoli, sia la che stiamo, che a me è una cosa che comunque piace e comunque va a mio favore, che è molto utile magari fare più, più ruoli. E no, comunque sto lavorando molto magari su migliorare il playmaker, come, come playmaker, perché comunque fin nazionale il 15 è praticamente un doppio playmaker, come si vede appunto quando gioca Paolo 10 e Tommy Allan 15, io prendo molto come esempio lui perché è veramente bravo a fare questo. Benissimo, benissimo. No, veramente un, un piacere. Senti, come hai vissuto sia lo stadio que- la, durante la partita, ma anche oggi c'era il, la giornata a porte aperte, quindi sì. com'è il feeling anche dei francesi che di solito a noi non ci possono vedere, però <ride> com'è il feeling con i tifosi italiani e non, magari anche gli immigrati, no? prima, seconda sì. generazione, sì. com'è sì. questo feeling con la gente? No, lo stadio appunto a Nizza bellissimo, c'era 30.000 persone più o meno, c'era, c'erano abbastanza italiani, onestamente non mi aspettavo così tanti e comunque anche il tifo- i tifosi de- dell'Uruguay erano veramente calorosi, c'era questa diciamo lotta, un po' magari di piccoli insulti, era nulla di... cioè che a me piace, alla fine è, è bello perché senti il calore dentro il campo e è una cosa che ti carica e quindi niente da quel punto di vista lì bellissimo poi a fine partita avevamo vinto fare le foto con i tifosi bellissimo erano tutti contenti e poi appunto oggi come hai detto te c'era l'allenamento a porta aperte bellissimo anche lì c'erano 7000 persone a allenarsi con le persone lì che urlano fanno cori bello è veramente un'atmosfera che appunto è da mondiale è incredibile se non la vedi non, non ci vedi nemmeno secondo me Va bene, tra l'altro ecco, mi piace questa cosa, cioè tu, tu vorresti avere sempre gli stati calorosi, diciamo, sì. come l'ultimo periodo anche delle zebre che com- cominciavano con i tamburi, la 1-5-5, però diciamo in generale meglio uno stadio bello aggressivo quasi. Sì, senza un di dubbio, senza un dubbio. A me piace, cioè, quasi piace se uno, insomma, ti va quasi contro. Alla fine sono cose che ti danno carica, insomma, a me mi piace il, il pubblico così caloroso, è veramente bello. Senti, visto il pubblico caloroso entrare in campo, la domanda che, visto stiamo creando una playlist con le canzoni che stiamo sentendo, che stanno, state sentendo attualmente nel gruppo, ma qual è una canzone con cui stai in fissa in questo periodo? Rap, trap, folk, <ride> reggae, qualsiasi. Qual è una canzone che tu dici, oh, non si sa perché, ma quella ce l'ho nelle orecchie questi eh. giorni. Allora, quella che, quella che ascolto sempre ogni giorno è di un trapper, Capo Plaza si chiama, okay. si, chiama <ride> si chiama Nisida. Ah. Ok, Quindi, ok, pensavo eh, giovane fuori classe, queste cose qua. No, anche quella, però Nisida è prima in classifica. Ok, la aggiungiamo alla playlist. 
noi sappiamo un po' che i trapper ogni tanto vogliono che spengono gli audio, ci diceva Zani, ogni tanto meglio alto perché poi il DJ... No, infatti, purtroppo non si ascolta mai, noi giovani su questo siamo fuori dalla cassa, c'era sempre Peho, c'è Carelli, quindi purtroppo non si ascolta mai con la cassa. Più Branduardi e meno trap con Ceccarelli. Sì, Sembra. più musica classica, classici italiani. Comunque mi piacciono anche quelli, eh, però, però prima della partita Nisida. Mario un po' di trap, un po' di rap, mi dà più carica. Perfetto, ce ne andiamo. Allora, eh, ti facciamo un'altra domanda con Mike, sappiamo che abbiamo veramente pochi minuti con te, quindi Mike, a te l'altro, e poi c'è il riunione. La, l'ultima? Um, ok, se c'è una, diciamo uh, un stadio che non hai mai uh, giocato dentro in, in Italia o fuori da, da Italia uh, quale sarebbe uh, quella che ti piacerebbe giocare? Eh, bella domanda cioè, sono un po' perché anche, ovviamente eh, in nazionale inizio a giocare ora e spero di giocarci il più possibile e ce ne sono molti di stadi ovviamente dove potrei sognare di giocare però quello, vedendo partite dalla TV e tutto, quello del, dei sogni è lo Stade France. Che l'altra volta ho visto la partita Francia Blacks, c'era un'atmosfera incredibile, pieno, bellissimo. Quindi ti dico quello. Perfetto. Grazie mille. Lore, io ti auguro il meglio, ti, speriamo di rivederti prestissimo in campo e speriamo in una tua personale ma anche del club ovviamente la franchigia una grande stagione con, uh, con le zebre quindi in bocca al lupo in culo alla balena buona fortuna tutto quello che ti possiamo curare ti auguriamo il meglio e grazie per questi minuti so che poi hai riunione e quindi ti lasciamo andare perché immagino se, se il più giovane arriva tardi eh no, eh, oh, non deve succedere no, se no capitan l'amaro si <ride> arrabbia e pure qualcun altro intorno magari, no Grazie, grazie mille Lorenzo, voi, grazie. è stato un piacere grazie mille in bocca grazie al lupo mille, ciao, ciao, ciao. Ciao, ciao. a presto ciao, ciao. Ciao. eccoci qua Here we are. Oh, molto positivo proprio a suo agio ragazzi sì, scusate, sì. abbiamo avuto questi minuti quindi li abbiamo spremuti e poi ecco già ci ha detto un paio di cose simpatiche a parte Nisida di Capo Plaza Mike tu non conosci Capo Plaza No, no, no. Che, che cos'è okay. Capo Plaza? Che cos'è? Eh, trap. trap. Central Sea all'italiana, un po' più, un po più, <ride> più street, diciamo. Dai, però è forte Capo Plaza. A me il rap sì, sì, piace. No, quindi, neanche qua. Ascolta quindi... il trap. Allora. <ride> um, volevo dire, lui, eh, come hai detto, sembra così adagio, così calmo. La mentalità dei, dei giovani sotto, sotto, sotto 20 che hanno venuto in nazionale sembrano così sì sì così calmi um, senza pressione eh, certo certo Se- senza per- pressione ha-, ha avuto 3k adesso 3 4k già segnato gioca gioca come uno che un 25 avuto, diciamo, sì, sì, 20, 25 30 sempre sempre calmo sempre giocatori di così sono calmi perché sono fortissimi dice Paolo sono sì, molto sì. forti ricordiamo lui è uno di quelli che non abbiamo avuto tantissimo tempo con lui perché no, sarebbe stato interessante eh, parlare di più rispetto proprio al suo sviluppo questo sì, magari sì. lo riprenderemo durante la stagione che seguiremo da vicino anche le zebre e quindi magari avremo modo di avere più, più spazio anche con lui ma sapevamo che stasera poi di corsa aveva una, una riunione ragazzi quindi queste le riunioni di questa settimana sono più che importanti, stra importanti perché veramente ci andiamo a giocare qualcosa. Uh, io consiglio a tutti, ragazzi, abbiamo fatto, adesso stiamo parlando in italiano, poi passiamo un attimo anche in inglese a breve, arriviamo alle sì. otto e mezza in italiano, ma, ah, scusa, alle otto e mezza italiane mie, facciamo yeah. altri dieci yeah. minuti e poi passiamo alla parte in inglese, così accontentiamo sì, certo. tutti visto che il podcast che vi consiglio che è Fratelli di Rugby adesso vi metto anche il bannerino qua sotto oh, e io no, traduco no. velocemente uh, for all the English people that are listening by the way we are going to basically switch to English speak about what um, Lorenzo Pani spoke about um, just translate basically what we asked and what he said and um, yeah so, so we're going to be speaking for the next uh, 15 minutes and 
in Italian, so we're just making everyone happy is what, what Ottavio said. So there esatto. we go. Quindi, ragazzi, parliamo un attimo in italiano. Uh, ovviamente vi consiglio anche la puntata precedente, perché oggi ovviamente è stata Inside Italy numero 3. Abbiamo avuto numero 2 uh, live con uh, Federico Zani. Federico che sapeva di, di giocare anche quella partita, ma sappiamo anche che, eh, come si dice, magari doveva giocare pilone e poi è passato a tallonatore, ci ha raccontato tante cose, ha raccontato come il loro focus per quella partita era l'Uruguay, il lavoro di difesa, eh, ci ha raccontato che è diventato papà da, da poco, pochissimo tempo, quindi continuiamo a fare gli auguri anche a Federico Zani e abbiamo avuto in precedenza Dave Sisi, con Dave Sisi una chiacchiera di un'ora nonostante la connessione contro di noi la connessione internet ce l'abbiamo fatta e poi ragazzi abbiamo intervistato in inglese Tommy Allan, Seb Negri Kieran Crowley, Marius Gusen eccetera eccetera quindi potete seguirci, potete ascoltarci su Spotify e vi consiglio, visto che oggi siamo live su tre canali, siamo sul Facebook di Fratelli di Rugby di Italia Rugby Podcast siamo su Rugby Cocciotto con me e siamo sullo YouTube di Fratelli di Rugby ragazzi iscrivetevi, ci aiutate a crescere ovviamente la precedenza su tutto e per tutto va a Fratelli di Rugby questo bello, bel progetto che stiamo portando avanti da, da qualche mese con Mike Italia Rugby Forum se non avete il Discord, iscrivetevi al Discord va Mike, parliamo un attimo bene perché qua veramente lui è sembrato molto, molto tranquillo a me sì, è sì, molto sì. interessante questa cosa che ha detto che doveva dare la palla ma ha sentito no? i field try ha sì, sentito sì. la meta che è entrata dentro secondo me quello anche è... può essere o è follia perché sei giovane o è... non lo so è il momento di maturità dici io qua la meta la faccio sì Quindi... sì andiamo and, and, abbiamo pre, appena detto che la mentalità ha, di, di questi giovani che vengono uh, dal sotto 20 è differente è, voglio, voglio dire forse la doveva dare ma come hai detto tu l'ha vista ha letto, ha letto che facevano i difensori e Um, eh, è andato, andato, andato diritto vediamo, vediamo che uh, se è un play che giochiamo contro Lou Blacks è come la... se la tranquillità sarà la stessa <ride> contro Lou Blacks sì, sì, no? sì. lui ha detto il sogno ovviamente è giocare Uh, in nazionale fare meta al mondiale gli trovano le mani con uh, quando ho visto Tommy Allen ma poi pensare anche a giocare contro, senza, con tutto il rispetto per Sudafrica, Australia, Irlanda, Francia, però giocare contro gli All Blacks è un'altra cosa, è l'ultimo livello. Poi se ci giochi al mondiale, manca solo la finale mondiale poi. Eh. Ah, anche per fa. lui, perché 2011 hanno vinto il mondiale. Lui eh, era vero. bimbo. <ride> e sì, poi... Lui ha visto proprio il meglio, no? Quelle sì, due sì, annate, sì, sì. 2011-2015, quindi sì, il, sì. il mito All Blacks ancora di più. Sì, que, 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 quei due anni. cicli erano proprio... Uh, Mo, mostri. Uh, mostri, sì, sì, diciamo. Ma eh, vediamo, vediamo uh, chi, chi gioca questa settimana. Sì. Viene mercoledì? Mercoledì. Uh, Mike, secondo te, te la faccio sì, in italiano vai. la domanda, secondo te quanto cambia la nazionale questa settimana per, per gli albiati? Allora, rientra per me... Morisi o no? Perché là è il per me di... no, perché penso, come ha detto Lorenzo, giocano tanto al piede, gi giocano in inglese si chiama al piede corto allora mm -hmm. uh, dopo il blitz um, calcio la dietro palla. la linea di difesa sì. appena appena dietro L1, eh, scusa L2, in L2. Eh. allora penso con Garbisi ci abbiamo uh, ci abbiamo quello no, diciamo un, un piede educato um, educato um, allora ci abbiamo, ci abbiamo la possibilità di fare qualcosa di differente ma uh, per me uh, forse Varni comincia Pejrelo 
o oh, Fusco, no, no. Fusco veramente sta diventando una bestia uh, ma per me si, si guardano a chi gioca su Lala e come sono in diciamo nel, nel, quando, quando saltano forse, guardi, forse vediamo che Capuzzo um, sta su, sulla panchina e portiamo Pani forse comincia vediamo per me per me non lo so quindi tu pensi anche magari un 5 più 3 e non un 6 più 2 in, in panchina 5 più 3 sì 5 più 3 interessante quello là più opzioni quindi immagino magari così detta ci sarà magari un fusco se pensiamo pagello dall'inizio o un pagello dalla panchina uno dogu centro ala Um, o Fusco 9 ala Pagerò 9 15 9 ala e il terzo è Pani che ti può fare estremo e ala quindi l'opzione da centro te la porti interessante interessante eh, perché? Uh, eh, io ci sto pensando forse forse io partirei quasi con la stessa squadra anche io non so se se, se leverei Garbisi Garbisi Alessandro perché Paolo penso i giochi però guarda è strano eh, perché poi sarebbe lasciare fuori i Morisi in queste partite uh, lo sai che, che quello è il dubbio è il dubbio o mi porto o mi porto un 9 e lascio fuori i pani e metto dopo non lo so veramente eh. è particolare perché il fatto di aver lasciato fuori i Morisi secondo me era anche in per il prossimo step, no? quindi averlo per la part- una delle due almeno. Quindi vediamo quale è la- sicuramente la più importante è la prossima. Allora io, io ho una domanda per te. Tu pensi che è meglio se il traguardo um, è per la Francia o per l'Oblax? Io penso che prima di tutto bonus point come va da uno o due poi lo vediamo contro gli All Blacks facciamo la partita con gli All Blacks perché poi non si sa mai quello che può succedere dopo e come arriviamo noi uh, quindi penso il focus adesso è sulla prima e poi sulla seconda siamo una squadra secondo me che uh, in queste due partite sì possiamo progettare, pianificare ma dobbiamo ancora fare degli step successivi li faranno nel prossimo, du- nel prossimo ciclo però qua adesso in queste due partite dobbiamo spingere forte e forse arrivare bene già alla prossima quindi fa IVA per esempio dalla panchina immagino uh, il cambio di 9 magari qualcosa perché non possiamo scommettere non possiamo fare un, uh, un bet solamente su una delle due dobbiamo provare una forte bene e anche la seconda alla fine la pressione prima è sugli All Blacks focus has to be the All Blacks, I believe, do you, Andy? Questo proprio stavo dicendo, il focus è su, forse andiamo prima su una e poi vediamo l'altra. L'altra poi sarà ancora diversa, forse un entusiasmo diverso, forse qualcosa di diverso arriva. Noi per adesso il compito fatto, 5 più 5 sono 10 punti e poi dobbiamo cercare di fare quei punti in più e quello che ho detto prima del mondiale deve essere difficile. Se vincono, gli All Blacks e vince la Francia deve essere difficile, non deve essere la passeggiata quindi quello secondo me è punto focale in, in tutto questo concordo Mike, shall, we, shall we switch English? yeah, yeah let's do it ragazzi passiamo all'inglese in questo momento, oggi niente spagnolo la prossima volta pure spagnolo ma passiamo una, un attimo all'inglese Mike, how did you feel uh, with, how, how did you see Lorenzo Pani? It was really comfortable in what he did. Yeah, yeah. So, so, he, I, I just there's there's something about these under twenties. There's just something about them. They've got a bit of bite about them, um, and also like you, you understand that these guys were people who were developed when Italy were in the dark days. You know, you know, thirty eight consecutive defeats, and all of a sudden you start looking at. You start looking at these players and, you know, they hear it, they feel it in their skin and they come in and, you know, they've got a bit about them. They've got a bit about them. They, they want to prove their value. But he comes in so calm. 
Um, I think I've said it before. He he looks like you know a 20, 30, 40 cap player. You would never guess looking at him that he's only had three caps. And yeah, it just that's what I think is something that we've almost lacked that that mental composure. So yeah, he looks he looks calm. I mean, what what were your thoughts? Obviously, with an eye to his first cap in a World Cup, like how do you think he he fared? Man, I think the 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 fact that he want to break the the situation just attacking that way is yeah. it's some different feelings. So I want to I want to break everything. I want to smash. I want to take my opportunities as a player to do what I want to do. So he yeah. did it. Yeah. Luckily for us, like he said, uh, with that waiting until the TMO say yes, no for the try. That was yeah, maybe the, yeah. the worst part because then he wants to play. He always show that he doesn't care, man. That is for me the, the way also the way he played. Maybe he's a little bit not aggressive, but really emotional when he play. Also, even with Zebre, we saw also other emotional players like Trullab, for example, that I spoke many times in uh, in Italian, uh, even on my channel. But this is something that we should we should think about. He's not the generation that lost the, those games. Those games are the past, and he wants to do what he wants to do with the with the national team. Something that Lamaro used to say too. Like we are not yeah. that. Yeah, yeah. We are, this, like... we are this new cycle. We are something different. Of course, you can lose the game, but you want some some decent games until now. Yeah, like these up. guys are unburdened by the sins of the past. Mm -hmm. Like the, the, these guys are in a position where like. They shouldn't have to worry about you know what happened before them. Like, why should these people be responsible for uh, results when they weren't they weren't anything to do with them, right? So, um, yeah, I, I agree with you. Again, you know, that, that's something that's really sort of undervalued the fact that so many Italian players get you know burdened with the responsibility from the teams of the past, and you know, it's good that they're making these positive changes. Um, I, I find him such an interesting character as well. I know we had some other sort of questions prepared, but we had uh, a bit of a time constraint based on you know him having to to go to a um, sort of group meeting, like a team meeting. So um, we didn't obviously, you know, we didn't want him as the youngest and you know with his first be cap be late because I don't. I, Seba would have an absolute field day on that one. He would, <laughs> he would have had an absolute field day. So, um, yeah, I, I think there's some really interesting stuff that he um, spoke about in, it, you know, in the questions. But there's one question that I was really interested in because obviously the new, let's say, era of, of fullbacks are people good in the air. He's six foot four for reference, so he's a tall kid. Um, I, I wonder, like, if that's something that's been spoken about, you know, because he's quite a well-rounded player, and I assume, I assume, obviously, they're they're looking at him at this cycle, and between him and Capuazzo, we're, we're, you know, and Tommy Allen, we've got you know some really good options in the back, and it's interesting that he said that he wanted to replicate how Tommy plays. What are your thoughts on that? Uh, this is so interesting because he. he, he... He saw him as an example for his development as a player, even yeah, if he's a, yeah. he's a 10. But probably he likes the way, not only to attack, because we know he's a, an attack-minded uh, uh, player, but also the management, so the playmaking. So probably... Oh, guys, I think we've lost uh, We've lost Ottavio for a second. Oh. Here, here I am. Hey, so, there we go. Good. So, attack minded. Yeah. Seems yeah. a player. But I think from Alan, what he wants to maybe reply, of course, the quality of the, the skills, the kicking skills, because he has also already a big boot. He can really long range kicks. Uh, we saw with, uh, with him in the Zebra and with the national team. But on the other side, what's interesting for me is the fact that. He wants to become a, maybe a better playmaker from behind. So that is really interesting. But also thinking now the new style of play that Zebra seems to put in the yeah. uh, in, in the new games, where it's not only one playmaker like we saw Tiffy and uh, Rizio Prishantelli playing, 
playing yeah. with a, a good 15 or a 12 like they try to do now with Montemari for example against Ealing it's really interesting because he gave you more option and he said I prefer to play fullback because I have more space to attack but, yeah yeah but man for me it was great what he did because he pushed a lot coming inside the field not losing those balls when he went uh, on the when he was on the wing which how many times which, we saw going outside no touching yeah, the, the line yeah. I, I was gonna say I think that's probably something that went against Mori like watching him play he always went on the outside he always went on the blind um and you know sometimes it worked sometimes he got bundled out and it's it's a, a small sort of rugby IQ that that benefits him right Absolutely, no, 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 be IQ to, to grow. Yeah. And that's yeah. the right right moment for all those guys like him. Uh, but, man, we, we said the other day how young was the team uh, with Alessandro Garbisi, uh, even Paolo Garbisi, pretty pretty young player. Yeah. And, and the talent is there. We have to let them, let those guys play and uh, express themselves in the field, uh, defending uh, Zebra color, Benetton color. Perpignan, Exeter, maybe speaking about uh, Vincent and having a cracking month uh, in the Premiership Cup. So, yeah, boys they, are fire, they, really. Absolutely. So, they have to play. Let's see what Andy saying to us because we are live. For who is listening to us now, please follow <laughs> us on every on every platform because you can you know if you follow us on Twitter or. Uh, on Facebook when we are live with this streaming. Let's read Andy because this is interesting. <laughs> I would love to get to a position where we are playing players at their natural position. Experimenting is great, but being confident and comfortable in, if you're in your role is crucial. Hashtag Bergamasco at nine. <laughs> so hey. probably the early development uh, is something that uh, we should do to focus on something then give something else maybe yeah, that is yeah. the focus we should put andy what do you think let us know because we're gonna read your answer too yeah i mean it's, it's a really it's a really interesting point and actually i think there's a um there's an interesting point to be raised there because obviously those of you guys who watched our um interview with tommy allen um what happened there was Tom, we, we asked him about versatility and adaptability and the Italian team, similar to sort of the South African team in, in that regard is quite unique whereby we're able to cover most of the roles in the backfield with a few players. So conceivably we probably could run a seven, one bench, like genuinely we probably could. Um, I wouldn't advise it, but we probably could do it if we needed to. So that's a really good point. You know, you do have to be comfortable in your main role, right? That's that that's a really valid point. But also you have to have the versatility and adaptability in tournaments because as we've seen, red cards, yellow cards, injuries, any of the above can affect the game. So you have to have that versatility because, you know, we've seen so many red cards um, just before we came on. Uh, there was a uh, yellow card to Scotland. Uh, sorry, to to the Tongan player on 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 uh, tackle and Richie, which I thought was a red, for example. Um, these get they make a massive difference. Like they can change games. They can make you lose them. So yeah, yeah, no, I, I, it's a valid point, but I do do see the value in um, being able to to adapt. Let's could they become our pen? Oh, Vito, Vito, welcome. Our Peno or something like a Freddie Stewart, speaking about a 15, maybe because he likes to play 15, you know? Man, if yeah. he became yeah. Peno, I'm not going to be angry about that. I'm going to accept it. <laughs> the I'm, I'm going to say something like a little bit unheard of. I don't think Peno has particularly good rugby IQ. I just think he's an out and out athlete. I think he's brilliant at what he does, um, he's got an eye for a gap. Um, but he's just quick, powerful, good in the air. Like he's all of those things. Whereas actually, what Piani's saying he wants to do is become more of a playmaker. He wants to be able to read the game. So like a steward is is probably a good example. But even if we're looking at the All Blacks, like a 
like a Bowden, you know, Bowden Barrett playing at 15, like that's the mold that he's looking to to go for. Um <laughs> that can can we just highlight the last question? Yes, oh, he y- yes, oh, he yeah. absolutely can. Um he, he he slotted, I think it was about 52 meters in one of the under 20 games I I watched. It was pretty pretty straight on, but yeah, he's got he's got a decent boot on on the tee as well. But what really sets him apart from a lot of the other players is his left his left leg is an absolute cannon. Like he has got a monster boot on him. No, it, it, it's a rocket. And uh, man, Simone, we have also coming, depending how he's gonna play in defense, in attack. But Mr. Jacob Trula, that sometimes we said long range. So young player, long range is something that we we need to highlight because we need those options. You remember last year with against Gales, we had Padovani from the long range. So we need also those options, absolutely. Yeah, also it also right. keeps those teams honest because they know they then know that they can't give away penalties in certain areas because there's potential of us knocking three. So actually it means that they they might be slightly less dominant on tackles. You know, they're going to be more careful about certain situations because they're not going to want to um they're not going to want to give it away in those areas. So yeah, there's there's definitely a benefit for it. And here, uh, well, let's read. Sometimes it's nice to 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 read some congratulations, like Ivan saying. So thank you, Ivan. Uh, thanks for the, the congrats for the job you're doing. Wish you could interview Paulo Dovo. Who knows? Maybe if it's not next days, we're gonna try to push it in the next month with uh, with Benetton. So stay on this channel. Stay on. Uh, stay with us. Uh, just follow us on. Uh, on every platform, as usual, I say, I'm saying because I think we we can try. We can try. We are really trying, actually. So it's it's interesting to to have a, a character, uh, yeah. un, un personaggio like yeah. Paolo Dobu. Yeah. So thank you, Ivan, for uh, that. And uh, speaking about players, there is still Andy. It's, it's interesting always speaking about defensive role as a 15. Uh, no, Bruno slot in there, but lagging in defense. That's why also I was uh, speaking about Trula. Trula is good in attack. If we read the um, the stats, it's great in attack. We have to become better, getting better in defense. Of course, we need to grow as a team. But uh, I think Pani has a has a not so good tackle average this year. Tackle success during the with Zebre. But yeah. still, you, yeah. you remember some of his tackle. Man, the tackle on Minozzi, that was spot on, but it was good uh, seven years ago, that kind of tackle, then he get the, the card there, no? Yeah, yeah, well, I, it's, it's interesting, right, because that you, you hit the nail on the head, right? We want well-rounded players in our te- at a test level. We want players who can defend well, who can attack well. And, you know, Bruno is just a demon you know, at attack, like he he loves it going forward. He loves an offload, and you know, even to the point now where people like know what he's going to do, and they tie him up, right? Like they they try and try and hold him up. We saw that a lot um, the other week. So it's um yeah, I I think it's going to be a point where like we will have similar to you know England, similar to France, similar to to Ireland in a sense where like, you know, I, I think James Lowe could do a very good job at 15. I reckon Hansen could probably do a job at 15, right? The, 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 the back three will be interchangeable and that's really, I think where we want to be. And, you know, we're halfway there. I think, you know, that there's, there's some really good players coming in. So let, let's squeeze the best that we can from this group now for the next two games to be focused on. But then of course, there's going to be a lot to do to improve on some good seeds that we saw now some little something is blooming now we have to see how long it's gonna be this flower uh, growing or the tree of the italian new generation players growing through the water that is is given by benetton and zebra and the other club and after that see how long they can uh, they can stay a big game big trees for us with deep roots in our in our style of play and uh, with results and performance more performance yeah. than results always in my in my idea but 
that's something that we we have to try to highlight and we're going to try to do it with Fratelli di Rugby, not only during the World Cup, because maybe, maybe our Cup is going to end uh, in two weeks. Who knows? But we know how Tommy Allen was ready for the, is ready for the upset, but was ready when we, when you interview Mike, Tommy, was June? Um, I think it was before the Irish game. So like, yeah, Yes, you have like July time, I think. Well, that's why I'm saying follow us because on YouTube and on Spotify you can you can hear and see Tommy speaking about upset, but four months ago, before all the against all the odds, because we are always yeah, against yeah. all the odds. But yeah, yeah, I mean, it's interesting, right? Um, there was uh, an in, I had interesting discussion on on um, one of the social media platforms where. You know, I, I think the general consensus is now that there isn't zero chance against us at any point, right? And, you know, the boys are unshackled. They don't have pressure. They've achieved what they want to do. They can go, and now it's the opportunity to express themselves on the world stage, right? So, um, man, I'm, I'm excited. I'm really excited for this game coming up. And like I said, you know, a, a, a big win for us is keeping it competitive, and a bigger win for us is doing the unthinkable right the unthinkable but uh, the believable let's say. yeah the believe 100 percent. yeah 100 percent. there's there's it's not it's not a foregone conclusion playing italy at any point anymore and that makes us incredibly exciting just to, to wrap up i would like to highlight another thing you, you said these days social media and stuff i think there was a lot to, uh, of respect against uh, uh, for us from a lot of uh, media speaking yeah. about the yeah. uruguay game wonderful uruguay first half no i i think and i want to re-say that no i don't think so i thought we did the things good for them they show what they what they could have done if we were playing 13 men for more time, they take more points, but then they melt, they melt completely. So we were good, or they were too bad. Yeah. Think about also how much they push the Uruguay Argentina game. It's, it's, that's it's a about... really good question. Yeah, that's a really good question. I I think right, they put pressure on us in the first half, right, and and that's credit to them. First, right, we'll take that away. Um. But secondly, I, I agree with you. I think if it was fifteen against fifteen, um, I don't, I don't think they would have scored. Um, because as well, we've got to understand we managed that fifteen. Uh, sorry, we, we managed that uh, double yellow card period quite well. And what put us back under pressure was whatever Nemev did in, in midfield um, off the ball, which then allowed them to kick to corner, which obviously gave them the try. Penalty try, you know. We know um, after watching it back, you know, what happened with Fischetti. He was tackled and he was tackled backwards by their four. Um, I think Mirko Bergamasco also highlighted it in a tweet, a tweet, which I didn't actually see at the time. You did. Um, but watching him back, I saw. So you can argue, you know, the toss of the coin there, that's 7 nil, But we potentially could have gone you know, only only losing four points in the double yellow card period because it was a kickable kick. It was just inside their half and Tommy Allen can slot those. So, um, yeah, it, it's, it's one of those, isn't it? Like, I I don't think necessarily that, um, you know, Uruguay... Yeah, I don't, I don't think Uruguay would have scored, but I do think they're a very, very good upcoming team. Um, so credit to them. Yeah, but I absolutely. I think only the like reading stuff today. Ah, oh, look how they play. Look what they're doing. When they were speaking about Italy, hey, you have to watch us. You have to understand how we grow. So, mind mind your words sometimes. Yeah, uh, yeah. A couple of things here popping up that, of course, even we already have good news uh, because we already spoke with uh, the the guy 
of the Exile Project. We're going to have a special um, edition of Fraternity Rugby with Matthew X, actually. So we spoke to uh, with him about the, the project. And uh, Ivan, you're going to know much more about what it means, the Exile Development Project by the Feder- Italian Federation in UK. The focus is uh, in UK. There's a lot of people around there, uh, people texting, people messaging, uh, sending email to the project. So, yes, there's going to be, uh, after the World Cup, probably we, we're going to put it out because we already recorded and everything that is ready. Yeah. And uh, what August specifically, but this is Andy because he's a veteran, Andy. Of course, in 2000, I was... Uh, 12 years years old. I remember at the Flaminio, uh, probably 2004, 2007. I remember 77 for uh, the, the All Blacks uh, when Mirko Ber- Mauro Bergamasco scored at the end of the game. I remember that game at the Flaminio. I remember Flaminio. That is a stadium that Lorenzo Pani needs to fill because that oh. was, man, that was, was crazy, that stadium there. But I was there the Flaminio for Scotland Italy first ever game, Six Nation 2000. We've had great ups, and huge, huge anger with huge lows. But I'm so excited with the Italy team, loving it. Forza Azzurro, yes, yeah, Easy. yeah. I, I think you know, I completely agree. I think you know, we need to find um, that that home again, and you know, that 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 a home that atmosphere. feels home. Yeah, it's the atmosphere though. Like watching the game yesterday with the Irish, and I think we'd be remiss without congratulating Ireland. Um, so well done, Ireland, and obviously commiseration South Africa. You just felt that in your skin, like even through the TV, it was like that electric buzz, and that's possibly one of like the best games of rugby I've seen in a long, long time. And you know, may, maybe even ever. Like, and I think it's because of the amount of expectation, the amount of buzz. Like, it was it was green lightning going through that. Like, from both sides, it was pure passion. And um, yeah, we we need to feel that. Like, that's that. You know, sixteenth man isn't just a phrase. Like, it's it's what gives you the energy. It's what pushes you to 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 get that. You know, to give everything you've got and more. So we need to find that way of like really showing that to our team because i think actually you know stadio olimpico is a beautiful stadium um and i think actually it's something where it's almost the issue is the the running track right you just feel slightly too far away if that makes sense but we just have to be louder we just have to we just have to shout as if it doesn't exist that's that's our responsibility as fans that's what we need to do we should be more georgian simba to me oh what the megaphone I will get the megaphone out. Don't, don't, don't you worry. We'll get the megaphone out. We'll get the megaphone. <laughs> we'll get the me- so 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 we'll we'll play the megaphone as well when we're about to to score or if they're about to like so they couldn't hear calls on the field. We'll do that, don't we? Um Perfect. Well, this is interesting. Go, sorry, go, sorry. go. I, I, I just uh, these these questions that are coming through, first of all, we love them, right? So keep them coming. Uh but this is an important one. I think a dog root is a really difficult player to try and analyze i think because like you said you know he 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 shouldn't be able to do what he does like looking at his you know it's almost like bastero you know like when you looked at him you're like he shouldn't be as a fast as he man. is that's true that's yeah, true yeah like, he shouldn't be as fast as he does he shouldn't be able to do like he's got center gravity in his boots like to tackle that man to tackle that man you literally need to aim for his boots um he's just yeah he's a really adaptable interesting player i'm really really happy that he's playing in blue because i think actually like he's he's an absolute gun so um yeah well, it's it's interesting to see isn't it what, yeah no so man Odogu it's a player with a lot of skill some lack of skill in no other area of the field. Think about also the big injury he had already. He, he still is so fast. So think about how how different could have been this this player without those injuries. But man, he came from a from a weird weird season. Three three clubs at the end. Yeah, 
was the collab for Italy because then he signed for for Benetton. Exciting time at Benetton with him, Fekito, Ratave. Think about those three, 12, 13, 14. You go with those three huge players in the middle. You, you have to win a uh, game abroad. So away games, you have to win it now because you have players like them. You're going to have back Lucchesi. Uh, Yakitsi is going to be good, but Odogu, more a center than a wing. He feel more a center than a wing, so probably he feel comfortable to read the defense and defend, attacking, rushing on more than uh, maybe covering the backfield and use to kick or to start from the back again. So that is something really interesting. That's a really good point. That is a really good point. And I think he said in a recent interview as well, he, he feels like he's a center. Like that's that's how he feels. He feels he's the center, he enjoys getting the ball more. Um and listen, like as at Crash Ball twelve, I think if Ollie Lawrence didn't have that, you know, really, really good season, um, it could it it was probably a toss up between them. And like I said, you know, for me, I'm happy that we got out of the two, I would have picked Adogu because, again, like he is, he's just absolute gas, right? He's just absolute gas. So, um, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm glad that obviously, you know, he, he, he's running in blue and it looks like he's enjoying his rugby. Like, that's one thing. Like you said, if you've been in a situation where you're jobless, like you've just immediately lost your job, you're there's probably a lot of stress in that. And actually, all the way that the, the, the 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 what's the word I'm looking for? The journey for him to get to this point has probably been, you know, quite quite like tough emotionally. And for him to finally look like he's enjoying his rugby, A is a testament to the environment that like Crowley and the coaches have built, but also the fact that he feels quite at home with the Italian team because the players had to like really open up their hearts to try and make him feel quite welcome as well. So I think that's quite a that's a testament to the team. And, you know, we've spoken to Seb. We know that everyone sees each other as a family and that's not just a word. So, um, yeah, no, I'm, 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 I'm happy to see that. Man, exciting times as usual. We're growing and, uh, hey, man, this, this is a, a nice last name. We know this name so well, but Connor, hi. Are we going to be here watching the next match? Uh, actually, I'm, I'm pretty open, so I don't know. Maybe we're gonna close. I don't know, Mike, if you're gonna be watching Wales Australia, but if, I have if to check not, with the boss, I have to check the boss. But I, I, I I'm, I'm, I'm keen. My I'm boss keen. is sleeping. That's uh, that's it. Two hours ahead. You're lucky. <laughs> um, yeah, I might have to relocate downstairs, but it, we can make it work. We can make it work. Yeah. So, uh, Connor, if it's the first time that you are joining Fratelli di Rugby on YouTube. Please subscribe and go deep into the the videos, but not only the video, but Spotify. Every platform is waiting for you because we have a, loads of contents, also from Kieran Crowley. So Connor Crowley, so, you're welcome with the, with the last name and cheers, congratulations for the win. Uh, yes, that's what I was going to say. If I was pushing uh, for South Africa yesterday. Hey, f- for me, I, I was going Northern Hemisphere the whole way, but I'm just yeah. Um, it, Good game, you know, I think enjoyable. Like I said, for me, I think that's possibly one of the best games I've seen, maybe ever, like ever. Like I, I think that was just, oh, you know, like so it, was, it was just theatre, wasn't it? It was just like you didn't know which way it was gonna go. Like there was sweat on everyone's brow. Like even, even the most vocal of fans, like probably felt like their heart was like about to blow up. It was just, it was just that game, and yeah, it was, um, it was a joy and. Um, yeah, you know, congratulations, Ireland, and congratulations, Connor. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. So, Mike, I think we're gonna wrap it up now. We're gonna yeah, yeah, yeah. 54 minutes, of course, guys. Thank you for the time with us tonight. Please subscribe to Fratelli D Rugby only with a D. But of course, if you are listening to us, you already know that. And uh, bella ragazzi, ho una lasagna. Oh, <sighs> lasagna in the oven. Uh, Ready. Thanks for creating a home for me, English parents, but grow up in Italy. Whoa, 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 Andy. Thank you so much. Hope you to see you soon uh, on our channel. Uh,
commenting because we like when people uh, interact with us in this live. That's why we, we are trying to, to do our best to bring contents and enthusiasm around yeah. Italy rugby yeah. club, national team, women's team, uh, under 20s and stuff like that. So Andy, thank you for be another Fratello di Rugby around. Because, and join us on Instagram too because we are active there too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, uh, yeah, I'm just echoing what Otto said. Thanks, everyone. Uh, we love the support. We love, like, everyone coming in. We love the interaction. Like, stuff like this, good fun. Um, so, yeah, motivates oh. us to do a little bit more. Mike, thank you for your time. Thank you thank to be you. always here with, with me when we are doing this. Uh, Marcello today is in a birthday party, so we lost him for uh, for today. See you next yeah. time. His, uh, his liver's gone. <laughs> ciao yeah, a tutti <laughs> <is done. laughs> guys ciao a tutti ci vediamo see you next time who knows when cheers lads ciao Vito ciao Andy Claudio Connor Ivan and everybody ciao ciao ciao